because we're cheating. Um, good evening and welcome to the Cape Elizabeth School Board meeting, uh, the August meeting, this time on Wednesday, August 22nd, and um, the year 2001. The first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We do have um, this evening one board member absent, and that is Marie Prager. And on behalf of the board, um, I want to extend the board's Condolences to Marie and her family um, uh, with regard to the loss of her dad. So. Um, second on the agenda is adjustments to the agenda. Do we have any this evening? Yes, I'd like to add uh, an executive session at the conclusion of the regular meeting uh, regarding a personnel and uh, student issue. Okay. Um, we're going to move on to approval of the board minutes for June 12th, which was the regular board meeting, and August 9th, which was a special meeting. Jennifer? Um, I've got a quick couple of changes on it. On which one? On the June 12th. Okay. Um, in the executive session, was not a counselor also present? I don't know. We've got... Um, Pete and Dwight, a student, a parent of the student. Didn't we also have a counselor there? Oh, the, the, um, oh, the oh, advocate. Oh. Yes. Oh, oh. Yes, when you were saying counselor, I was thinking of town council. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm so. sorry, no. Okay. Um, yes, you're right. Yes, there was. Okay. And um, then there's just a typo on page 39C under 12D. Okay, and that is? Larry Greer. Okay. Um, others? Uh, yep. 39E, 12-1, um, on the field trips, uh, it says French students are coming here in February, our students go to France in April, I think that's the other way around. Does that sound, anybody remember? I just copied I up my notes, I don't know. I'll okay. double check. We'll, we'll double check that. Okay. Okay. I'll set Jennifer on those. Thank you. Um, <laughs> communications. Uh, do we, we have one, on, we have an agenda item here. Are there other communications that we need to cover? Okay. Uh, Tom, did you want to present this one? Um, under communications, we have a thank you note um, from Marla Bono thanking uh, the board for the, the gift uh, upon her retirement that was presented in the spring. Okay. Um, comments from the public? Seeing all staff here, I suspect there's not any, so I'm going to move on to recognition. Okay. And um, we'll probably have some of that in September. And Tom, uh, the superintendent's report. Um, there are a number of notifications of resignations that occurred um, and the first portion of the summer. Um, also, uh, I'd like to give you an update of some of the professional hiring that took place over the summer. Um, you have in front of you a list of the all new staff changes, several of which came to you in the spring. As far as the new hiring at Pond Cove School, uh, we have Jill Shaw in guidance. Um, at the middle school, Carly Bean, special education. Sally Connolly, grade five, Lisa Leonard, 0.5 world language, and Brian Frasero, grade seven math. At the high school, um, Mark Tinkham, assistant principal, Dwight Ely, social studies, and Jocelyn Bedoin, 0.5 special education, and system-wide, Sarah Simmons as facilitator of professional development. And we do have one transfer to note, John Casey, will be serving as the middle school interim assistant principal. Um, I also would like to uh, 
take some time before I turn it over to Pauline regarding facilities to update you on the Future Direction Planning summer work. Um, this summer, we had several Future Direction Planning teams that did meet. Uh, the Professional Development Group held a two-day workshop um, dealing with the implementation schedule and with the major task of creating a model for professional development for, for the school district. Um, their first steps will involve a lot of research and looking at uh, what's happening in other places, reviewing surveys, um, and just getting some, some baseline information. A curriculum group met to begin that process uh, for a one-day session. The climate team um, had a two-day uh, session um, where they were able to put together some ideas regarding creating a baseline of information and also some work that will be done during the first few days of school um, regarding um, our mission, vision, and what that means for each individual school. Also, there's another group of vision review team which, the, which has the task of um, measuring or assessing the progress we've made in our future direction plan, specifically how much progress we're making toward the accomplishment of our vision. Um, I'd like to also share an update on our educational foundation and just read um, a list of individuals who will be serving as the board of directors. Um, Andy Gohegan, Doug Cranshaw, Noreen Curtin, Gail Rice, Frank Strout, David Unger, and Terry Ann Scriven. This group of seven individuals will be the voting members of the Education Foundation. Working with um, the foundation in the role of advisors will include myself, Elaine Maloney, uh, representing the school board, and Joseph Groff, who's done quite a bit of work for the group uh, from a legal standpoint. Uh, the foundation's in the process of creating a brochure um, and looking into a plan of action for this school year. And um, we do have several new administrators, of which we have some here this evening. So just in terms of a formal introduction, um, I'd like to welcome and introduce uh, Jeff Shedd, who will be our new principal at the high school. Mark Tinkham, and Mark's not able to be with us this evening, but he will be the assistant principal at the high school. Sarah Simmons, who is um, working in the role of facilitator, professional development, and curriculum. And John Casey will serve as the interim um, in the transfer position at the middle school. Any question on all of that? Thank you. Um, Pauline uh, will give us an update on the condition of the facilities for the opening of school. Pauline Fortria, business manager for the district. I think we've all heard from our friends, and I say it myself, the summer is never long enough. Well, that's a comment I've heard from custodial and maintenance staff for the past month that summer is not long enough. Uh, but they've done a wonderful job, uh, as usual and by next Wednesday when students come into the building, uh, the schools will be ready. We've had uh, quite a few maintenance projects. Um, one of the large ones is renovating the chemical storage room uh, uh, in the science area at the high school. Uh, we've also replaced lighting and ceiling tiles in those two science rooms that connect the storage room. Uh, so that will be most of that project will be completed except for the roof fans that will be coming in in a couple weeks but won't interrupt any class time. We've done uh, floor tiling uh, at the high school, in the cafetorium at the middle school, um, and a lot of other little projects. So everybody's kept busy, but they've done a wonderful job and we'll be ready. That's great. Any Thank questions? you, Pauline. <clears throat> any questions? Um, we're going to move on to principal's reports and uh, Nancy, starting with the middle school. I certainly understand that with our new understanding of how we're going to be focused and timely, there's no pressure on me about going first and my past performance of being a different kind of time person. So I'm going to try a new thing. Um, really like to talk to you tonight just about summer work and update you where we are. We still have some summer work going on. so. Perhaps we'll include that in our September report. First of all, in language arts, in fifth grade, Cheryl Higgins has been working this summer to review and revise the book selection that the students read in common. And what Cheryl has been really interested in 
is looking at students' ability to comprehend at in-depth levels. And she is going to be piloting some small group discussions with a variety of books next year, and then sharing that work with her fellow fifth grade teachers. Originally, she had designed to do this work with um, her colleague, Julie Williams, but very early in the summer, Julie moved on to a new assignment at the Alfred Elementary School. So Cheryl forged ahead and worked on it by herself. Um, a lot of her work has been informed by what she's learned about comprehension from reading the mosaic of thought and also strategies that work. <coughs> so she has some exciting things ahead. Still in the language arts area, in grade six, Claire Ramsbotham, Carolyn Russ, and Rachel Guthrie worked together to develop a website for activities for the incident at Hawks Hill, which is a common novel that they read. This is a takeoff of work that the three of them had done earlier and already had been using last year with Journey to Topaz, another common novel, and this was time to really do the work for incident at Hawks Hill. In grade eight, Therese Roberts, Jamie Mishu, and Mary Murphy, who all taught um, eighth grade language arts last year, met just at the beginning of the summer to review their book selection and to add a new common novel to regular eighth grade language arts and to also revise and further develop some assessments that they can use both for group assessments and student self-assessment on their reading. In social studies, in eighth grade, Therese Roberts is in the process right now over the next few days, um, leading Ken Plummer through a process of familiarizing himself with the eighth grade social studies program. Uh, Mr. Plummer is transferring from the seven, many years of teaching in the seventh grade to teaching in the eighth grade. Therese Roberts has been an eighth grade social studies teacher. Joining them also will be Kathy Welch, who's going to be doing a long-term subbing position for Paul Casey to also familiarize herself with the eighth grade language, uh, pardon me, social studies program. In science, the seventh grade teachers um, have met to really check the alignment of their um, curriculum with their content um, and standard guidelines from not only Maine State learning results, but also national science standards and to see where they are. Uh, to work in and reflect on the use of some new resources they used last year. We finally had a FOSS kit, and FOSS is the program we use K through 6, um, to use in 7th grade and electricity, and they wanted to get together and really go through how that worked, what worked well, what didn't, what they wanted to keep from past units that they had done. And they also worked on developing a common format for the labs. The next couple of days, I believe the 8th grade science teachers are going to be doing a similar type of activity. In health, Julie Salikas um, worked for a short amount of time this summer just updating health records and doing things with all the information that we have about students. And actually, you would be surprised that even their middle school health records, people come back and look at those things as they look in their entirety. Many of them use them for college applications, applications to private schools, or even parents use them as a resource for um, when we need to go to the doctor um, kinds of things. So Julie has done that. The World Language Team has um, been they actually met at the end of June and did a lot of work on revising the scope and sequence of their program to incorporate the increased program um, in Pond Cove, and that meant we had to change the 5 through 8 program a little bit to adjust that. So their full team met and worked on that project. In the area of mathematics in sixth grade, um, Aaron Filio, Joe Doan, and Gary Record met um, and did some work. Aaron is a new teacher joining the sixth grade team, and they met to share resources with Aaron and explain what they do beyond the textbook. And also then the three of them together really worked on creating more activities for both our accelerated students within the regular sixth grade program and also our struggling math students within the sixth grade program. In guidance, Kim Sturgeon went to a two-day conference on career planning and looking at that, that's a part of what we've really tried to add in the middle school program over the last several years, and she picked up more information to share with Rick, also her coworkers in, at the high school, and then all of our advisors and homeroom guidance people on interest surveys and portfolios for career education. The Students Assistance Team had three of its members, um, went to a renewal and an update meeting. Scott Labby joined them, and he's going to be working with them as the administrative rep on the Student Assistance Team. We've also had a series of grade level meetings where the grade levels get together for a half a day and just really review the things that they're doing, get acquainted with the new staff, and also work at setting a common tone for the year and getting things ready. 
there have also been informally many meetings with our new staff and our veteran staff has done a wonderful job of serving on committees to find these people and then also following up with phone calls, notes, meetings at school to swap materials, show them where rooms are, um, really begin that whole induction process for them. And also pleased and want to thank Gary Lenoy for his efforts at putting together again another successful technology camp of which many of our staff members took part. Thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you, Nancy. Tom Pankove. Good evening. I'm glad some of you got the memo on wearing a blue shirt. That's, that's kind of nice to start the <laughs> summer that way. Check your email, Kevin, I think. Um, George, you mentioned last night that teachers' uh, classroom responsibilities end in June. But over the summer, as you've heard from Nancy, almost every staff member pursues some sort of professional development activity. Some take courses to pursue degrees, some take workshops. We even sent three teachers to uh, scenic Indianapolis for the third straight year to participate in a national ready for this looping conference. It was looping as relates to restructuring and teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. We've also had um, subject matter meetings cross grade level in uh, math and writing. And uh, one I mentioned last night, uh, a little different, was we have some grant money from the Maine Math and Science Alliance to do, to take a look at the Japanese lesson study model and see how it applies to Pond Cove. And a slightly different meeting this year, a grade three will be meeting tomorrow for team building and uh, take a look at the third grade curriculum. We realized through looping, um, changing assignments and sabbaticals that out of the seven third grade teachers, four of them will be new to that team. So it's an, another important dimension. To give you some idea of what gets accomplished at these meetings over the summer, um, I brought an example. Um, I think Kevin again and other people have said so what about the assessment might be, assessment and testing might be particularly interested in this. We have been doing degrees of reading power in the district for a few years and like any other standardized test, there is a level of quickness and dirtiness to it. Um, grade four in particular has taken that test very seriously and I think they've kind of wrung it dry. They have done the best they can with the information trying to relate surface comprehension to the books that the kids actually read at Pond Cove. But they still found it to be a bit of a stretch and a challenge to relate it to what we actually teach. They made a proposal to meet for two days in late June, early July with the reading teachers to take the degree, degrees of reading power idea and relate it directly to the curriculum in Pond Cove, particularly with this new framework we have agreed upon in the past year or so. I, I can't tell you how terrific this test is. And since it's at the elementary school, they went to uh, great lengths to make sure that each teacher has a kit. It's also very user friendly and that every fourth grade student will be able, will go through this process at the beginning of the year. It's complete with uh, lists, that uh, word recognition lists, um, comprehension levels, selections from text, all pegged to text levels that we use and are also related to uh, um, reading development nationally. It's just an outstanding, outstanding job they've done. That's, that's one example of the kind of work that gets done and I think it's uh, indicative of the kind of sophisticated professional engagement that teachers have when there's a structure for doing that. Um, that's the one I'm touting but all the other work I think is, is just as good. It's really great stuff. That's great, Tom. Questions? Questions for Tom? Comprehension questions? And <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yep. Now Jeff for the high school. <laughs> Welcome, Jeff. Thank you very much. Um, we're ready to start on uh, Wednesday. I think we have a population of 505 students who are going to be beginning and with an incoming class of freshmen of 135. Um, and one of the interesting major changes is there's going to be a significant influx of multi-handicapped um, students, uh, which is behind some of the renovation at the high school as well. Uh, facilities work, Pauline mentioned that. There has been some work, though, in connection with trying to make enough space for the multi-handicapped students um, so that they can get what they need in the high school. Um, hiring is complete, I will say, as an outsider, um, looking through the qualifications, the resumes and applications of the people who have been hired for the high school, I am incredibly impressed. Um, there's some really, really, really good people who have been hired. 
um, both as teachers, and I think Mark Tinkham will, 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 will meet that description as well. I'm very, very, very pleased. Um, I'm grateful to, to Pete and Dwight, and I know Mark is as well, for the excellent work that they've done and the excellent um, quality of the teaching staff and morale that they've left behind them with students and staff. Um, we are not doing any tremendously major changes coming into this school year. Um, we are doing some tinkering around the margins uh, in, the, in the student handbook to clarify um, and define some things a little more specifically, I think things that were probably implicit, uh, that we're now kind of making implicit, we're trying to define consequences a little bit, a little bit more uh, specifically than, than was true in the past. Um, we did meet, um, had a great meeting with uh, representatives of the Cape Elizabeth Police Department the other day because we're hoping to have a very, um, not, not frequent, but very positive uh, sort of relationship with, with the members of the Cape Elizabeth Police Department. Um, summer work, um, there's been a lot of it, and, and I don't, don't pretend to be a master um, at this point of, of everything that's been, that, that has happened. I know that the English and history departments, interestingly, work together, um, and that's a big thing in education, to have two departments work together, and what they really worked on is to try to coordinate the calendar of research projects that students face in the high school, uh, which I think is going to be a great benefit to students, particularly the junior and senior students, um, but, but freshmen and, and sophomores as well, as well. And not only the coordination of the calendar, but also the coordination of some of the instruction related to students learning how to do high quality research work. Um, there was also a group of people who worked together on the research handbook. I don't know if the board is aware of the research handbook that exists, but it's sort of the product of the English department and Joyce Bell, the librarian, and a number of teachers from other departments. And the board should be aware that other schools are asking and have so far received permission to be able to use that book uh, because it's a really, really, really high quality product. In fact, those other schools were not asking for, for royalties at this point, but the other schools are helping us get our book copied for our students. So there will be some benefit for that as well. It's a really, really, really top quality product. Um, the math department and the foreign language department <clears throat> have been very busy. The math department for the last several days this week working on a number of curriculum revisions, um, defining, doing some of the documentation related to their curriculum. Um, we are beginning Monday afternoon. Um, I'm going to just run off a couple of dates. Uh, there are letters going out to parents and notices, but a couple of them are pretty critical. Monday afternoon, ninth graders are coming in for an ice cream social um, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon for an hour and a half to have an informal opportunity to, to see the school and meet some key staff. Um, Monday evening, Mark and I are meeting with some student senior leaders uh, to try to set a tone and, and get, get a dialogue going with those lead, the leadership of the students. On Wednesday, um, ninth graders and transfer students will be beginning school at 7.30, um, and then there will be a second bus run at, that will get students, that will be two hours later, exactly two hours later than the normal, normal scheduled time for the 10th through 12th graders to come to school. Uh, it's really an effort to try to break in ninth graders and new students as gently and in as friendly way as we possibly can. Um, and there's a letter to parents in the mail that they will be getting either today or, or tomorrow about that. There is an open house uh, on September 11th at 7 o'clock in the evening, um, and it's going to be preceded by a one-hour Meet the New Administrators Forum uh, from 5.45 to 6.45 in case anybody wants to attend that. Um, I intend to spend a lot of time in the classrooms of the school. Um, I've been talking to uh, a number of parents this year, and the, the one message that I get um, consistently from every parent that I've talked to is the high quality of the staff. There is, there is not there are not people collecting paychecks in Cape Elizabeth High School. There are people who work hard and they're high quality and they adhere to high expectations. So it's going to be a thrill for me to get into the classrooms. It's a great way for me to understand what's happening instructionally in the school, but also to meet the kids as well. Um, and that's kind of where I am. I'm excited about the new position. I'm honored to be the new principal. And I'm eager to get things feeling a little bit more real starting on Monday. Thank you. That's great. Questions for Jeff? Just a comment. I think you said uh, that you were really impressed with the quality of candidates. And I think that the community uh, really does need to celebrate the quality of education and the reputation that we have of the schools because that's what attracts um, excellent candidates. It's what keeps our excellent um, staff that we have. And, and certainly, um, you are an example of our ability to attract uh, you and Mark both. Um, the ability to attract uh, great people to our system. So, Thank you. thanks. 
We're going to move on now to committee reports and Kevin Finance Subcommittee. Primary discussion tonight was a uh, photocopier lease for $85,700 and a technology lease for $111,721. Pauline explained the, uh, the leases and the rationale be behind the leases and we'll be acting on them later in the meeting. Other than that, it was our typical housekeeping of reviewing, uh, reviewing the appropriations report and signing warrants for funds expended over the summer. The only other thing I would like to do is to remind the public that finance committee meetings are public meetings and certainly uh, welcome, the public is welcome to attend. That's your choice. Thanks, Kevin. Um, policy subcommittee, <coughs> Jennifer. Um, excuse me. Uh, we have our first meeting scheduled for Wednesday, September 5th at noon. Okay. Um, there is no unfinished business that I know of, and the new business um, starts with the, the uh, consideration for superintendent's recommendations of athletic fee positions for the fall 2001 um, included in the, um, the package. And um, we, do, we do have a few positions um, that I'd like to read to you as my recommendations. Uh, Drew Riddle, eighth grade boys soccer. Uh, Mark Pendarvis. 7th grade, boys soccer, Sue Weatherby, varsity field hockey, Don Burke, freshman boys soccer, Heidi LaRose, 8th grade field hockey, Aaron Wittish, JV field hockey, Ben Bluen, JV girls soccer. And I need a motion, Jim. I would move that we approve the superintendent's recommendations for the athletic fee positions for the fall uh, 2001 schedule. Need a second. Season. Thanks, Jennifer. Questions or comments about these recommendations? Seeing none, all those in favor? 6-0. Now move on to superintendent's recommendation to fill co-curricular fee position. And we do have one co-curricular fee position that is a co-advisor to the student council uh, at the middle school, Lydia Schilt. Okay. I need a uh, motion. Jim? I would move that we approve the superintendent's recommendation uh, to fill the co curricular fee position. Okay. Second? Susan? Thanks. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? 6 0. I'm going to move now on to consideration of lease purchase agreement for computer technology equipment. George? Yes, Kevin. Uh, I would move that we authorize the superintendent of schools to execute a technology lease in the amount of $111,000, $721 even, as described in the enclosed document. Okay, which have been reviewed by the board. Uh, I need a second on that motion, Susan. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? 6-0. I'm going to move on to um, consideration of lease purchase agreement for the photocopiers. Again, Kevin. Again, uh, I move that we authorize the superintendent of schools to execute a photocopier lease in the amount of $85,712.53 as described in the documents reviewed during the finance committee meeting. Okay, thank you. Second, Susan. Um, questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? 6-0. Um, before uh, we have a motion to adjourn to adjourn our public session, and we're not planning on coming back into public session, um, we will be moving into an executive session. But before that, dates to remember are, as Kevin said, uh, the finance subcommittee meeting coming up, which would be on our regular school board meeting night. Uh, that will be Tuesday, September 11th, starting. At 6.30, it is a public meeting in the William Jordan Conference Room, followed by our regular school board um, meeting at 7.30 here in the council chambers. And we have uh, set a uh, workshop, which will happen later in the month in September, uh, Tuesday, September 25th at 7 p.m. Uh, we'll give another reminder of that at our next school board meeting. That will be in the high school library, the topic of which is the community center. And at this point, um, the board will move to executive session to discuss a personnel and student-related student matter. And um, I will take a motion to move to executive session. I move that we adjourn from public session and enter executive session to, dis to discuss student and personnel matters. Second. Jennifer, thanks. 
questions or comments and seeing none, all those in favor? 6-0, we'll now move to executive session. Thank you all very much for being here this evening and have a nice rest of the summer. We'll see you back September 11th.